All right, Nico Carver from Nebula Photos here. I'm here with Christopher Baker in the Chicagoland area. Christopher is an excellent amateur astrophotographer, and he's agreed to show me his uh, home observatory. So when did you build this, Christopher? I've been building it over the last couple of years, okay. essentially since COVID started. So what was the motivation for building an observatory? Were you just on a tripod before? Yeah, I would haul the tripod and out from the inside, and I got a couple stairs, and I'm getting older. My back doesn't like to scream at me when I carry too much weight. So um, it just got to a point where I'm just, you know, I couldn't go out as much as I wanted to. And we have such crazy weather here. We'll get clouds part of the night and be per perfectly clear the rest of the night. So... There's a lot of times I was missing nights of imaging, and I felt so frustrated having gear that I wasn't able to use um, just sitting there. Um, so I decided that, it, to me, it was worth building an observatory so that I could take adva full advantage of the equipment that I have. And when you were building it, did, so did you start by doing the pier first and then built the structure around it? Yeah, I built the pier first and had a design for that. And, you know, I did a CAD drawing first because um, I'm in the CAD and that kind of stuff. So... Uh, I did a CAD drawing and came up with all my dimensions and figured out essentially the lumber that I would need and then figured out where the pier was going to go. And, you know, I didn't build it to the exact height. I built the pier shorter on purpose so I could make that final calculation when it was all built. Um, so, yeah, I started the pier first and then we moved on to the to the shed. Well, actually, we did the electrical first, then the pier and then the, the shed. Okay. And how did you design where to put it in the yard and like how how... Uh, high to make the walls and all that kind of stuff. Well, like I said, I, I don't want to, didn't want to crawl into it. I want it to be more of a like a an actual shed that we could use in, in the future. If we sold the house, somebody could come in here and use it for an actual shed. Tell tell us a little bit about uh, the the mural on the outside of the observatory. Oh, so yeah, I, I painted it all one color, and then I decided that you know I have all this astrophotography that I like. I'd really like to put a mural on there. And I had a friend that's an artist and she does that kind of work. So I asked her if she could come by and paint the one end. She did that and I absolutely loved it. So then, you know, about six months later, I had her just recently come and do this side. So two of the four walls are done with the mural. This side is based on one of my, you know, Pillars of Creation photos. But then this is just a, a whimsical interpretation of a galaxy that she did. And you've also decorated inside with uh, mission patches? Oh, yeah. So I've been into space since I was a little kid. So I've been trying to purchase all the uh, human spaceflight uh, pat mission patches for all the human spaceflight uh, in the U.S. So I have, like, the Mercury and the Gemini and the Apollo and SpaceX ones. Um, I don't have the shuttle ones yet, but I'm hope that's on my Christmas list. <laughs> okay. So one other thing that you'll probably want to consider on, I don't know how you want to end up doing your track. Mm -hmm. People do the track different ways. Um, some people use a V-shaped uh, track that sits on top and then you have V-shaped rollers. Mm -hmm. So the whole roof rides on a rail. It's not really held down by anything. So I decided against that because I didn't want any chance of it getting blown off. So I this is captured basically. So it's a garage uh, track with garage rollers and there's different ways of doing this mine's adjustable um, you could also put them in a fixed way so it's just mounted right on the two by four um, so my roof really can't come off unless you take all these rollers off but on top of that I also have hurricane what I call her you know tornado straps so basically I can put these on I have one on the other side too and then tighten these up. So if I'm going out of town or something, or there's a storm, I'll come on here and just put these on just for peace of mind. But sure. I mean, it's not going anywhere, but yeah. it's just, it gives me some peace of mind that I don't have to worry about it. And tell us about the, the split roof uh, design. Cause I, this is my first one seeing that kind of design and, and tell us sort of the advantages, disadvantages of the split roof. Well, I wanted the split roof a, because I didn't want the extension to go too far out. Um, and B, I wanted to have that little space on the other side where I could actually work because my pier is on one side and then uh, the right side is more like a workbench and stuff. So I wanted that space. I wanted a fixed roof on that side. It also helps stiffen up the walls as well. 
So for all those reasons that I decided to do split roof, is it necessary? I don't know. Most people don't do that. They just roll the whole roof. But again, it, the more you do that, the more, the farther out it's going to go. And for me, I just didn't have the space to do that. If you were to, you said you were thinking of doing a remote observatory, would you sort of build it the same way as this one? Or would you do things differently? What, what do you? I think I, I, the size wise, I would build it bigger because if I didn't know those limitations to put a second pier in. So I would definitely have a second pier because then I have my solar rig or my long focal length rig and then a second, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's the only change that I would do differently. Major change. I, again, besides the mistake of buying the wrong motor. Um, the only other thing that happened that I wish I would have paid more attention to, but again, I was just doing this on my own. I bought a couple, a, a book, you know, one of the books that's out there. I bought that and read through it, but just browsing the internet, looking at other people's designs, watching YouTube. The only thing that I did wrong in my mind was I didn't, when this rolling roof was built, we built it on top of the, the structure and they made one mistake in that they didn't square it up. So there's a gap down here. Oh yeah. So there's a, a like an inch gap. I still have to fill it with, you know, some, weather stripping, but the roof twisted. So when I put it, essentially when we put it up onto the rails, it twisted the seat itself. And when that happened, that gap formed. So the only thing that I would do different is I probably would measure the first square and then strap it because we built just the, just, just the rafters and then we put the plywood and then the roof on. So if we would have strapped it all together, and then built it all, it wouldn't have twisted when we actually finished it. But it's, you know, if that's my only headache, then. Sure. So that would be about the only thing I'd change. I really, I love it. Uh, to me, a lot of people say, well, why did you build an observatory in a, you know, a Bortle 7 8 area uh, right next to a busy road? Well, because. I got a lot of money in scopes and other equipment, right? So I want to use that every day that I can. So right now, it takes me less than five minutes to start imaging. I can decide inside, I want to image tonight because it's clear, go outside, take out my lens caps, open the roof and go back inside and hit play and it's, it's going. So for me, even though it's not, I don't get 30 nights a month that I can image, I can still get 10 or 15 and it's not like even if it's a partial night I can take it out you know before when I was hauling out my big tripod and I was taking this big 770 out and putting it out there and putting my stuff you know that was a half hour 45 minutes to set up and pull our line and get ready to go yeah. and then at the you know at the end of the night I was bringing it back in so it's like three in the morning I'm lugging it back inside so this is just like so I get so much more use out of it. So to me, it's worth every penny. If I spent, let's say I spent $3,500 when I, you know, all the other stuff, 4,000 most on the observatory, it's, it's worth it because now all this equipment that I have so much money invested and I can use all yeah. the time.